What's up guys, we are back again with another Type R video. In my last video, we touched a little bit on the new Mitsubishi full race drop-in turbo. We also talked about the limitations of the stock fuel system and how we might be able to possibly push the stock fuel system a little bit harder. Uh, one of those options is to actually drill out the OEM high pressure fuel line. The fuel input um, line itself or the hole itself is pretty wide. However, the output to the high pressure fuel line is extremely, extremely small. The fix is to essentially take out the high pressure fuel line itself and to drill out uh, the hole to five and 60 fourths uh, with a drill bit. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. When I talked with James at K-Tuner, he said that he would believe this would give about eight to 10% um, more on the top end and the higher RPMs. Because right now in the mid-range, we are really moving, it feels really good, but it is tapering off a little bit from a fuel pressure standpoint towards the higher RPMs. With that being said, this is a free modification you can do on your own time in your own garage, depending on your skill level. We're gonna attempt it today. Why are people doing this? Why are people attempting this? Well, the other two alternatives is the XDI fuel pump, which is about $1,500 before taxes, and the Honda um, fuel system upgrade, which gives about 20 to 25% increase. If this is free and you can get about 10% increase, half of that, I'd say it's worth a shot. So that's what we're gonna find out. And we're gonna see if we can really continue to push the fuel system on this car with the full race Mitsubishi Turbo tuned on K-Tutor. So stay tuned and I'll do my best to document and record every step of the way and let you guys know exactly what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. Thanks guys. We're going to take out the intake box and we're gonna get a better view and more room in there so we can go ahead and remove the high fuel pressure line bracket which is going to be um, just next to the hot side piping so i'll do my best to show you guys exactly what i'm referring to so let's go ahead and take out the intake box all right guys so we got the intake box out uh, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the bracket for the heat pipe and the reason why you want to remove the bracket for the heat pipe is because it's going to allow you easier access to the bolt that's holding the high pressure fuel line against the engine block. And I'll do my best to show you guys that bolt, um, but it is hard to see and it is hard to get to, which is why we're taking out this bracket, okay? All right, guys, what I'm showing you in this picture is the hot side bracket that has to come off first before we can go ahead and reach the fuel line bracket. As you guys can see, this is the bracket that you're trying to take off um, in order to get easier access to that bolt. Um, it's pretty easy. Um, there's two 10 millimeter bolts and there is uh, three 12 millimeter bolts. And let's see if we can get a shot of this bolt here. Okay. So as you guys can see, I already took off uh, one of the fuel pressure lines. And the reason why I did that was to take off the bracket. And that's this one. This is a 17 millimeter bolt right here. Once you get, you can kind of move it out of the way for now. So you guys see, this is gonna be our high pressure fuel line. So if you guys follow it all the way back in there, you'll see a bolt down in there. It's right in there. It's like it's a 10 millimeter, 10, 10 millimeter bolt and that is mounted to the engine block. Once you go ahead and work your way and get that bolt off, then you can go ahead and go from underneath the car next to the intake manifold and remove it. How am I gonna get to that bolt? So I'm gonna try and show you guys the best of my ability. Um, I got a long extension and I got, the extension that I actually used is a wobble extension. That way it allows me to have some flex on the 10 millimeter itself. Make sure you guys get your magnet ready right here to catch it. And we'll go ahead and get it out for you guys. It's going to make it 10 times easier to get it out. I'm doing my best to show you guys how I'm doing this. 
just like that. And how the heck are we going to get it back in there? Well, strong magnet, stick it back in there just like that, and you twist it and get it started. So I managed to not drop the screw, but lo and behold, I dropped a big ass extension. So some things you just never learn. All right, guys. So we got the bracket off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and loosen up the high pressure fuel line. I believe it's a 19, um, but my three quarters works perfectly with no slack. Now, because these are fuel lines, there may be a little bit of fuel that does come out. So you have been warned. All right, guys. So what you guys are seeing in this video here is what I was feeling without being able to see anything up by the front pipe behind the oil pan. You'll see that 19 millimeter nut that looks like it has oil dripping from it. The black piece above it is the intake manifold. So if you actually reach your hand over the engine itself and under it, you can actually feel it and break it loose that way. On some forms, it is recommended you take off the intake manifold to actually get to this nut, but I was able to do it by going on top of the engine bay itself and breaking it free. All right, guys, so we were able to get the fuel line out. I had to um, ask for my buddies to come on over with uh, thinner arms, much lengthier arms than mine to actually break the 19 millimeter bolt off. Um, a lot of people have actually been able to get the bolt undone from the bottom of the car through the front pipe area. My buddy was actually able to reach his arms over and around behind the intake manifold and break it off that way. Once you break that off and you've already got this top portion off, you can just turn it and pull it out from the top. And from there, you should have your high pressure fuel line out. As you guys can see, this is the good end and this is what we're gonna be working on today. See how tiny that is. All right guys, we got our drill bits here. We got the 5 64th and the 1 16th. We're gonna start off with the 1 16th and then work our way up to the 5 64ths. And using a little bit of lubricant, just because it's gonna get hot. This is what I had in the garage, so that'll work. As for what I'm using, I'm using some vice grips to hold it with some cloth, and that'll help me with keeping it firm and sturdy while drilling it out. Let's get started. Okay guys, so we just wrapped up drilling out the tip. I went ahead and I took a half drill bit in diameter just to bevel it, just a little bit. If you notice on the other side, it is beveled a little bit. I'm not sure if this is gonna let me focus, but we did bevel it a little bit. And that's it. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it all back together starting with putting the fuel line itself back in top to bottom. Next. So what you guys are gonna wanna do is go ahead and put this in and you're gonna twist it, rotate it, and then you'll go and tighten the fuel rail side first behind the intake manifold. Then you'll go ahead and line it up with the fuel pump and then you'll go ahead and put the bracket back in. All right guys, so we were able to put the high pressure fuel line back in. Um, it's really time consuming guys. Um, you guys will find that when you guys are installing it, it may fit on one side and on this side it may not fit. It may not fit properly. Um, as I recommended earlier, you guys are gonna wanna tighten the side that's on the fuel line on the back of the block behind the intake manifold first and this may be off a little bit. So it is a steel line. I did go ahead and I did bend it 
forward a little bit while my buddy went in and tightened it up for me. A couple things that moved out of the way were some, were some vacuum lines to make things a little bit easier. Um, this did get undone. I unclipped that as well. And we pulled off a couple other vacuum lines as well, just to give us as much room as possible. Um, be patient, guys. All in all, this project probably took about five to six hours between two days. So just know it's gonna take some time. All right, All right guys, so we just wrapped up tightening the fuel pump bolts. The next thing we did was reinstall the brace that had those bolts that hold the, that held the uh, hot pipe side in right there. That's a 12 millimeter right there, a 12 millimeter right there next to the battery, a couple 10 millimeters hidden. It's a real long one right there. If you guys can see that deep in there. We're just about tidying things up. I'm gonna put the cover back on the fuel pipe, put the intake back on and start her up. All right guys, so we just finished tightening up all the fuel lines. Um, it's important to prime the system, right? That means starting it without starting the motor. So clicking the start button twice without actually turning the motor on. So the fuel pump actually gets to turn on and start pumping some fuel in. Um, the car's gonna run a little funny when you first start it up because it has to get all the air out of the line. So just keep that in mind. It's also important when you start it up to check for leaks. Common points of leaks might leak from here because you have to take that off. It might leak from here as well. These have to be extremely, extremely tight right here, these two. And it very well may leak from behind the intake manifold because that's where you had to tighten as well. Um, I have a cloth right now, so that way I can start it up and see if there's any fuel that actually gets into the cloth. So let's start up for the first time. All right, guys, if you made it this far into the video, you're gonna learn some lessons learned on my end personally. Have the right tools. Um, I had to get 30 slash 60 degree angle wrenches specifically for the fuel line nut on the back of the intake manifold. It made things so much easier to actually get it tightened. Those fuel lines have to be extremely tight or they will leak the smallest amount of fuel. You've got to find a way to get them extra tight and those 30, 60 degree wrenches really helped. The bracket on the fuel line itself, I did not reattach it. It wouldn't line up and it is such a hard line, it is not going anywhere at all. Some other people have experienced this as well. All in all, this job really took me about eight to 10 hours. Truthfully, once I was all finished, done and done finding the leaks themselves. Um, the car is running great and uh, hoping to do some data logging and see what the outcome is. So stay tuned.